able to write in kanji now. So we've got Fujihan, good. We've got Getsuyoubi, and Kayoubi, and Suyoubi, okay. We've got Junigatsu, and Nijugonichi. This is, 25 happens to be one of the dates that's just normal pronunciation, so that's nice. Nihonji no Hon, there you go. And does anyone have questions about, for example, how you would put together inside the water, in the water? How would you put that together? Because it's all stuff you've learned. We just haven't put it in that order yet. There you go. Yep, so Mizu would be first. Mizu, no. Naka. That easy. Again, we're, we're revisiting a grammar point from way back in lesson one, how to use no correctly, right? Yeah, so if it's like a, usually I have to like an apostrophe, it has to be the water inside. Yeah, izu no naka, yeah. The water's inside. Yeah, the water's in. <laughs> yeah, so, that, that, so it's weird in English, but if you think about it in terms of one noun modifying another noun instead of an apostrophe s, then it starts to have yeah. some logic and consistency to it. Okay. So, okay, and of course, everybody knows nichiyobi is that same kanji for day on both ends, right? Okay, and then of course, Thursday would be mokuyobi, Friday would be Kinyobi and Saturday would be Doyobi. Okay, and by the way, I don't know if I've mentioned this yet. So, Moku, Kin, and Do, and of course the Yobi is all the same. They sometimes use that first kanji as shorthand for the day, that day of the week. So, if you're telling somebody what day you have Japanese, class, for example, you could say kamoku, just that, kamoku. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're telling somebody you've got a class that meets Monday, Wednesday, you could call it getsusui. Okay, if you've got something that's just going on this weekend, donichi. So they do use those, oh, yeah, I was back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alex left the no. papers over here. So, any questions about how to apply the kanji to the phrases and sentences we know? Okay, so that's a good little warm up. Let's go ahead and do some. Vocab real quick and then we'll get into some grammar. So, this one, of course, is Mizu. Shita, as in below. Yes. Mizu when it's by itself, but when it's part of this compound, how does it get read? Suiyobi. Yes. So it's important to know that although it's the same kanji, when it's a standalone word, it's mizu, meaning water. When it's part of this, suiyobi, you could still say that it means water in the sense that it's water day. You know, Wednesday they call water day. But it's always read sui when it's part of this sort of two or three kanji compound that is based off of Chinese origin readings rather than Japanese origin readings. Okay, this one of course is? Okay. This one is? If we connected these with the no in between, hon no naka, what would that mean? Inside the book, yep. In front of, yes. Maya is front. 
Ewing is a hospital. hospital. where once you start learning more kanji, it actually helps because the ko in koan means public and the n in koan means a garden. So public garden, park, kind of makes sense, right? There's a lot of these that are logical once you know the kanji for them. Just isu. Isu is a chair. Yes, not to be confused with itsu, with a tsu here instead, which would be when. Itsu desu ka? When is it? Versus isu desu ka? Is it a chair? Chikaku. Yes, nearby. Chikaku. Why? When I was a child, or when someone was a child. Email. Right. Again, if you know that this kai is the same kai from kaimas to buy, mono is things, objects, you know, things you can hold in your hand. So kai mono is literally like buying things. <laughs> okay. Is a 
restaurant tonight? <coughs> To meet with someone, yes. So, tomorachi meet arimas. Opera is a temple, yes. Buddhist temple. Oh. Oh. changes to. Kaimas, which means to buy, yes. Same root as kaimono. Yeah, about approximate. Next to. Yes, onari is next to. Okay, a good way to remember this one is just to picture things that are next to each other that you're used to. So, for example, you're, you know, Andrea-san wa Arata-san no tonari desu. Now, you guys always sit next to each other in this class, so you associate tonari with that person that might help you remember tonari. Yeah. We had this one before, alone, yeah, alone by oneself. Yeah, some of them repeat because I've got a furigana version and a non furigana version mm -hmm. for the kanji phrases. Mm -hmm. Naka, which is middle, middle or inside. inside. Yes. And it's sort of demonstrating because the line goes through the box. I love the ones that look like what they mean. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. Right. Suyobi, Wednesday. And it may not look like it much anymore, but the evolution of sui was squiggly lines representing running water, like in a stream or something. So if you squint, then you might be able to see that, sort of. Sure. <laughs> what if you close your eyes? <laughs> yeah, it might work better. <laughs> What's this one? Ponya is a bookstore, yes. Oh, yeah. The ya indicates like a, a shop. Or a right. The ya as a suffix generally means a, a shop that sells that kind of item, specializes in that item. So honya is a bookshop. Uh, hanaya is a flower shop. Um, the band called Sekenya, a soap seller. Okay, Sekenya. Yeah, that would work. They don't actually sell soap. Oh, that's funny, yeah. but that's what it would mean. Yeah. Sekenya would be a you know, soap seller. Um, trying to think of some other examples from real life. Um, you know, Yalya is a fruit and vegetable seller. Ramen shop. Ramenya, sometimes. Yeah, Udonya. Sometimes those kinds of small mom and pop restaurants get called Ya like, as well. Like sweets. Yeah. Um, Maybe just a kisaten? Well, kisaten is a cafe. a cafe, but like a shop that sells candies, a not a sit down place. But yeah. Well, panya is a bakery. A bakery. Panya. But like, um, I don't think they use anya. I can't think of what they call a candy shop per se, but um, <coughs> the, ya is not the only suffix that means shop. So depending on the kind of shop it is, there are some that are called something else. But the ya actually originated from a word that can mean roof, and it can also sometimes mean room or house by extension from roof. Yeah. And a lot of these kinds of shops, like Honya, Hanaya, etc., very frequently in the past, they were like the downstairs level was the shop, and the upstairs level of the same little building was the proprietor's home because they were little family-owned businesses. So it was like so, in the new Baymax kind of yeah. they have a bakery. In the right. Side. Yeah. So it's that kind of a scenario. It's very common in traditional Japanese towns and villages, even to this day, for families to own a little restaurant or a little shop of some sort, and they have a little apartment 
upstairs from their business or behind their business sometimes. I had a friend who had a salon and um, her living space was partially on the ground floor behind her shop and partially upstairs. So, because so, the, the salon part didn't take up that much space and I think she shared like the, the bathroom and sink area that she used for the salon she kind of shared with her living space, so the family used it as well when she wasn't working with clients. So there are lots of small towns that have those kinds of arrangements where, you know, yes, there's a commercial kitchen kitchen downstairs, but they might cook for their family down there too sometimes. Fire day. Yeah. Fire day is? Kayobi. Yes, so ka. If it helps, kaji is a fire like a you know, a fire that isn't under control, like in a, uh, a house fire or a city fire or something. It, the G is the same G that's in um, Jiko, car accident. <laughs> so it's like an accidental fire, a fire event that you didn't want to happen. So Kaji is a fire and Kaiobi is fire day. So, and then this of course is San Jihan, which is 3.30. Doyobi, Saturday. Notice the um, pronunciation. This do is just a single syllable do. For whatever reason, a lot of people tend to forget that the yo is the part that's got a long u on it every single time. And the first syllables aren't necessarily extended vowels, okay? So this is doyobi, not doyobi, okay? Doyobi, doyobi. Yeah, so that's important to note because I get a lot of people misspelling doyobi on quizzes and tests. Hi, Nihonjin. Yes, this person. Hi. Imas. Person A stayed at a place. Right. So, for example, Nihonjin ga imas. You could put those together, right? There is a Japanese person in some place. As well as like the Audrey, or the living equivalent of Audrey? Yes. So. Yes. So, Audrey is for things, Iru is for people and animals. So, Neko ga imas, there is a cat. It ne doesn't necessarily say where the cat is, just that there is one, right? If you want to specify where, you can add a place phrase, like uchi ni neko ga imasu. In my house, there is a cat. Or, you know, a soko ni neko ga imasu. Look, over there is a cat, you know? Machi. 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 Like the town. town, yes, machi is town. So, machi ni neko gaimasu would be in the town. There is a cat. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> one, one hour, ichijikan. Yeah, the con part changes it from one o'clock to one hour. I'm so, I, just, I thought that the line was like, the representative squiggle. Oh, yeah. First one, I was like, yeah. I was like, so if we were saying an hour ago, would, it, would you end it with something like past tense? Or ah, very good question. You can actually use mae, which is in front of, but it's also before. So, ichijikan mae would be one hour ago. Oh. One hour before now. So you wouldn't use a, past, a verb in past tense or something? Well, it depends. Um, like, if you're telling when somebody went, they mm -hmm. they went an hour ago, ichijikan mae ikimashita. You would use yeah. the past tense for the go and not the right. mae. Right. Well, the ichijikan mae is just one hour ago, mm -hmm. right? But then if you're going to say anything about that, including a verb, that so-and-so did something an hour ago, then yeah, the verb would be in the past tense. So, ichijikan mae tabemashita. 
person ate an hour ago. Uh, they studied an hour ago. Okay? And by contrast, if you're talking about studying for an hour, not in the past tense necessarily, but just saying that that's the plan to study for an hour, Ichijikan benkyoshimasu. If you're talking about what you're doing right now or what you're going to be doing in the future, that you're going to study for an hour, then you would change the verb tense to be appropriate for that statement. So that, that's a really good point to point out, that the verb tense controls the tense of the whole sentence, basically. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which, by the way, the onomatopoeia for a meow is nya nya. Nya nya. You've seen nya nya cat. Yeah. It's, it's so yeah, hard. And they, very often they put those onomatopoeia phrases in katakana. So that's another fun reason to know katakana is you can get, you can look through a manga, even one that's been translated into English, and within the drawings, yeah. you'll find lots of katakana that you didn't realize it was there until you knew what to look for. Because exactly. it's very often a weird font. I still, because I've, I've been trying to do that now, because yeah. like, I've been going back to some of the ones I know, yeah. like, and I've been yeah. trying to look, because, you and know, yeah, there's a picture of a cat, and it's like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I'm or the there's... I'm trying to read, but, like, mm -hmm. some of them are, like, action. Yeah, like, things. if something heavy just dropped on somebody's foot, got done. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it's raining cats and dogs outside, za, za. I yeah. have, that was one of them. And yeah, was like, if, somebody's, them. if somebody's falling in love, doki doki. Oh. What are the ones with laughter? Uh, there are m multiple. There was like... Ha 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 is one. Yeah, he he cool. he is was another. Like, wah, ha, ha. wah ha ha, yeah. But oh ho ho ho. Oh ho 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 <laughs> is yeah, another. Yeah, there are lots of different laughter ones. But all, most of them seem to be H's. Yeah. Hoo 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 is another. Um, so he's more like going to yeah. But then there's, um, you know, there's so many. I mean, animal sounds galore. Um, and lots of pig sound pigs. effect. I think, I think pigs say boo boo. Boo boo. Yeah. And boo boo. Boo boo. Roosters are coke coke. In Russian, is kakadu. Yeah. Kakadu. 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 I forgot. I forgot what the. Oh my gosh, that is sad. Uh, it'll come to you when you least expect it. It is. Yeah, that's one of the joys of being multilingual. <laughs> <laughs> For dogs, I know it's guff 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 guff. Oh, that's funny. And in Japanese, it's one one one. I want to hear a Japanese dog. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's gonna sound and, the same. And cows say mole. Mole. In Japanese, yeah, cows are mole. So that's always a fun exercise. See, see how many katakana things you can come up with or read or write yeah. for katakana practice. What about this one? Departo. Hi, which is? Departo store. Hi. So for example, departo de kaimono shimas to go shopping at a department store. Arubaito is part-time job. <coughs> so again, and again, arubaito shimasu. You, you can use the verb shimasu for arubaito to do a part-time job. Oh. Rice or meal. Right? Cooked rice or meal. Because if it's kome, kome is raw rice, you know, it's still hard, dry. Yeah, you don't want to eat that. <laughs> it's not a meal. Not a meal. Kara is from. Yes, kara made. Yes, that one. Hopefully, you wrote down somewhere in your notes or in your book if you're writing in your book. Hirari is opposite of migi. Left. So hirari is left. Hirari migi. Very important to know once you're like, trying to get directions. <laughs> Anata is you. you. Hi. Hi. Picture or photograph? Yeah, photograph. And 
心。お。What's the verb?、Uh, A letter, letter. old-fashioned paper letter. letter. It could be typed or handwritten, but Tegami assumes、yeah, that you're actually mailing it snail mail.、Um, Tegami is it popular in Japan? Yeah, there there are still special occasions where email just won't do, like weddings or something.、No. Yeah. Um, wedding invitations are normally still paper.、Um, Even in America, though. Yeah, yeah. nengajo are、um, New Year's postcards. They're equivalent of Christmas cards. You know how in this country, even though a lot of people don't bother anymore, it, it's still fairly common for a lot of people to send out Christmas cards, right?、Mm -hmm. In Japan, Christmas is not that important since less than one percent of the population is Christian. But New Year's is a big deal in Shinto tradition. That's a very important holiday. It's probably the biggest holiday in Japan. So most people send ningajo, which are New Year's postcards, and very often the post, the picture side of the postcard will be something representing the new zodiac year. So if it's Becoming the year of the dragon, there'll be a dragon design or something on the front, and then the back side, there's a very ritualized set of sentences and phrases that have to be used to say greetings in this new year, thank you for everything you've done for me this past year, and you know, yoroshiku o n a g a i s h i m a s for the new year, basically. Yeah, so it's very formal and ritualized, and. They're supposed to be handwritten, although I think some people do get them printed these days and they just sign. But traditionally, yeah. yeah. But these days, you know. But traditionally, they were generally、um, all done by hand. Some people would even do it with a calligraphy pen, <laughs> and、um, they are mailed such that they will arrive on New Year's Day. Or even a day or two later, they're not supposed to arrive beforehand. So, like, if you mail it too early, the post office will actually see, oh, this is an engajo, and they will put it aside and wait and deliver it on New Year's Day. That's nice. Is New Year's、yeah. the only celebration that the whole world takes part in? Which New、uh, Year's? Not at the same time, but I think so. Yeah. Well, yeah. We should be learning. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it goes around the world, but yeah, I, I guess、oh, it's about、that's... the only one that's sort of universal. Although some countries like China still、yeah, prefer that China still goes by the lunar calendar, and the the Western style New Year isn't that important to them. But the lunar calendar New Year is a huge deal in China. Japan actually converted all of their calendar stuff to the Western calendar. So even though A lot of their holidays come off of the Chinese lunar calendar originally. They now celebrate them on the equivalent Western calendar dates, just because they converted to a Western calendar. So there are very few things in Japan that still get celebrated on a lunar calendar type schedule. They just, you know, if it was originally the seventh day of the seventh month. On the lunar calendar, they knew now do it on July seventh, that kind of thing. Things that were originally March third, you know, third month, third day, are now March third. You know, How many months are on the lunar calendar? Um, I believe it's still twelve, but they're not the same length as the Western calendar one. So it, it was like twenty-nine、mm -hmm. and a half days. It should be. Yeah, I just just how long would a cycle? Right, so I think the lunar calendar is slightly、yeah. off. Like some years, they actually will have like an, a few extra days added in to、mm -hmm. compensate because the solar year and the lunar 
year don't really sync up completely. Because no one wants to do 13 day calendar, 13 yeah. month calendar. Yeah, I don't know why nobody likes the number 13. Because they're, I don't, Somehow know, I don't care for it, but I, I, Right, but I mean, the origin of Friday the 13th being bad luck has nothing to do with Eastern culture. So I don't know how it came about that. Well, wasn't it something, what was it from? The, the Friday the 13th being bad luck comes from the Middle Ages when the Catholic Church, I think it was, decided to have a crackdown on a particular sect that they decided was getting too rebellious. And so they basically went in and raided that group and slaughtered everybody. And so that became a bad luck day because of that it happening. It happened to be Friday the 13th, probably. Yeah. And it, <laughs> happened to, it happened to be a Friday the 13th, and so that became associated with that date being bad luck because it certainly was bad luck for those people. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, then it came over here with the immigrants. And yeah. Right. It came, well, this was happened? Middle Ages when that happened. I think it was like... 1200 something or, or whatever so that had Friday the 13th being a bad luck day had already permeated European culture before mm -hmm. the first Europeans came to what became the Americas yeah so but that doesn't explain why Chinese culture wouldn't want a 13th month so <laughs> yeah it's trading with us or not maybe know. it's harder that way because then it Uneven. Yeah, well, it's an uneven number, yeah. But I, I've never understood, because even like the, some of the stories about the Chinese zodiac include the 13th animal, the cat, that got left out because... They made an anime it, about that. Yes. Yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, I know, evil. Evil. <laughs> But he's so cute. Yeah. They should put the but, um, back in. <laughs> but I don't know why Nico was in, excluded in the first place. So. What'd he do? Because he, he rejected back. the Buddha. Well, the, no, the, the version of the story that I've read was that he tried to trick... The mouse. No, the, no, the rat tricked the, 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 the cat. Um, cat and told it the wrong time, uh, so it overslept, yeah. so it missed out. But it wasn't the cat's fault. Exactly. So it was the rat's fault, and the rat was so clever, mm. so he got to be first... Because the cat would have eaten him. <laughs> right. So I don't know anyway. I so, eaten them. There, I there are multiple versions of that legend yeah. also. So Well, really I think the legends were created to explain why you have a calendar. Exactly. It wasn't the other way around. It wasn't like the they really the animals. had the animals come, you know, and then they came up with the calendar. The calendar existed and then somebody tried to come up with a story for why it is the way it is. But I still don't know why Western Zodiac and Chinese Zodiac both revolve around the number 12. And yet they developed totally independent of one another. Because the Western Zodiac is 12 cycles within a year. And the Chinese Zodiac is a 12-year cycle with a different Zodiac animal for each of 12 years. And then it cycles back around again. But where do we get the number 12 from? It seems from to be like a originated from. Yeah. Figured it out. yeah, well, I mean, 10 seems like it would make more, more sense, sense if you're basing it off of 10 digits. How do we end up with 12? Is it just because the lunar cycle seemed to be 12 and people who first came up with it were Oops. miscalculating the solar year badly enough that they missed a whole month for Because if you do the math, yeah, you could fit a 13th month in very yeah. easily. <laughs> and then you have the same days in each month. Right, yeah. Because it would be a lot more maybe even. Like six hours. It would be a lot closer to being even that yeah. way. So why they didn't do that, I do not know. <laughs> so we have this weird extra day yeah. that, that knocks everyone out, and we're like, what, 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 what yeah. happened? Yeah, so at any rate, so let, let's move on. <laughs> Super is Superman. 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 Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, Todu is the Sorry. verb for Todima to take a picture. Shashino uh, Todu. Therefore, yes. Haida uh, is. What? Between. Between. Oh, okay. So, for example, um, I 
Andrea さんはアレクさんとデュンさんの間です。Below, under. Friday, also known as Golden Day. <laughs> yeah, this kin, by the way, is also in lots of other words that have the word gold in it. So, for example, kin byo is a goldfish. <laughs> and kin kakuji is the golden pavilion in Kyoto, the one that's actually got gold leaf all over it. Ooh. Yeah, it's very shiny. <laughs> um, Person or people. people. Yeah. The Japanese sometimes uses plural, but not that frequently. So if you say Nihonjin, you could mean one Japanese person or you could mean Japanese people. It's sort of ambiguous unless somebody uses okay. some sort of context to indicate which they mean. So if you say, for example, Kono daigaku ni. Nihonjin ga imasu. There are Japanese people in this college. We can presume that you mean multiples just because I'm pretty sure there's more than one. But if you thought there was only one, that sentence doesn't have to change. Okay. So let's do some. Munho no renshu. Okay. So we're starting on hyaku. So you're each going to be making a sentence to explain the location of one of these items. Okay? And there's more than one possibility for how to explain where each of these things are, right? So who wants to start today? Hi. Uh, Ichiban. Yubin Kyoku. So find Yubin Kyoku and then make a sentence about where it is. The other noun comes first before the location. So, you being Kokua. Okay, so just 
does this help to kind of separate things out a little bit? Yeah, it's a lot. So, yuri no maya Yes. So, you're going to put whatever your first noun is, that's the one that you're supposed to be talking about. That's the one that somebody asked you, hey, where's the yuri in kyoku? wa doko desu ka? Would be the question, right? You bin kyoku wa doko desu ka? Would be a question, right? Where is the post office? Okay, and see how the structure works. You bin kyoku wa doko desu ka? Doko is asking where, right? So in your reply, yu bin kyoku wa, that part comes down matching, right? Parallel structure. Byori no mae, this whole phrase is your description that answers the question where, right? Byori no mae, hospital's front. Do you see how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's answering the question doko. And then des, of course, is an element of parallel structure again, right? So do you see how that fits together? So this is, again, an extension of grammar structure we had before, because we had the question before, yu bin kyoku wa doko desu ka? And then we had a different kind of answer, like asoko desu, in the past, right? Where you were just answering the doko with something very general, like asoko or koko, or soko, right? So we, we used to have very ge general, non-specific ways to answer the question, doko desu ka? Now we have a much more specific way to answer it. Location no mae, you know, byoui no mae, hospital's front, or byoui no ushiro, behind the hospital, right? Hospital's back. Or byoui no tonari, would be hospitals next to, <laughs> okay? Byoui no chikaku would be hospitals nearby, right? Byoui no shita, if we're talking about the basement of the hospital, right? Um, Byoui no ue, if we're talking about a higher story within a building that includes a hospital on the ground floor, say, and a yuvin kyoku on the top floor. This <coughs> makes sense, but you know, some, sometimes in other realms that's going to work, right? In <coughs> Japanese, dekanto, for example, it's fairly common for the basement level to be suba. Okay, and in a lot of hoteru, you might have a kisaten on the inside, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Niban, Shirana-san? Kisa ten wa hotel no naka desu. Hai, exactly right. Kisa ten wa hotel no naka desu. So, again, you've got that exact same structure. Does it make sense? Tadeki-san, sanban o deshimasu. Basu tei wa My no. Uh, check your order. Check your structure. Must tell you what. Daigaku no mae desu. Hi, there you go. Must tell you what. Daigaku no mae desu. Makes sense. College students write the bus a lot. <laughs> Especially in Japan, where it's very rare for a college student to own a car. It's very expensive to even get your driver's license in Japan. They have mandatory driver courses that are very expensive, and you cannot get your driver's license without taking one. A horse? No, a training course. Oh, not a horse. <laughs> they should come here. Again. Uh, so if, if you go over, you have to re. If you have an American driver's license, I think there's a way for you to get an international yes. license and drive on that in Japan um, without having to get a Japanese one. 
you can get one international one, I think, here. Yeah. I think you can get the international one before you go, but don't forget, they drive on the opposite side of the road, and a lot of the roads are a lot narrower than we're used to. Sometimes, without any curb <coughs> to speak of, and there's a stone wall right there. So you really want to be sure you're comfortable driving. And you probably want the smallest subcompact you can stand <laughs> if you're going to be driving Japan when you first get there. Oh, is that why they have those little mini cars? Yeah, because some of the, some of the cities in, in Japan, don't forget, they're historic cities, right? So some of these towns and cities, the roads were built at a time when the only traffic was likely to be horseback, um, palanquins being carried by people with strong backs and people walking with maybe a mule or a farm cart behind them. But not the kind of traffic we're used to with high speed cars and wider vehicles. So some of those really <coughs> narrow streets, they're barely two lanes, but they're two lane traffic, two way traffic. So you could easily knock the side mirror off or scrape the side of your car against something just trying to drive. Can you buy Get a red car? car? <laughs> no, used. <laughs> yeah, that's probably possible. Because if you buy a rental, you have to pay back. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it, you just, if you're going to be driving in Japan, so I would say very, be very careful. Yes. I, I never drove while I was in Japan. I, I used public transit. Even in the small towns, they have better public transit in a, a village in Japan that is half or even a quarter the size of Satellite Beach. They have better public transit than Melbourne has. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. sad. <laughs> <Indeed. Yeah. laughs> Plus, if you're in that small of a town, you can probably walk across it in half an hour. <laughs> So that if you re yeah. but, explore very easily. Yeah, but if you, yeah, it used to be an hour wait for a bus sometimes in Hachiman when I was living there, but I could walk across the whole town in less time than it took to wait for the bus. So, you know, if I didn't get feel like exercise. waiting, I would just get my exercise. <laughs> sure. You know, depending on where I was going and, you know, how yeah, er early I needed to get there or whatever. I, sometimes I would time it right so I, I knew I was getting to the bus stop at the right time for my bus if I knew it was going to work or something. But if it was a weekend and I just wanted to get across town and go do some grocery shopping or visit a friend or whatever, if I didn't feel like waiting for the next bus, I would just walk it. And it literally didn't take me more than half an hour to walk from far end to far end <laughs> of the whole village. So anyway, moving on. So Basate we did, so the next one is Nonban. See what I I was talking about the kanji? Mm -hmm. Hi. no ushiro desu. And you can see that the N kanji looks kind of like a garden in the sense that it's got a wall around it, like a you know, an enclosure. Right? And then it's got stuff on the inside. Is that like word plants and flowers. Mean? That N means garden. Well, yeah, but like in the part oh, that's inside the square, does that mean like flowers or some, anything like that, do you think? Um, I can't see like such small phone. print very well, but I know that the components that are inside do have meaning, but I don't think it's, it's not the character for flower, I know that much. Yeah, it's got soil in there, and it's got a couple of other pieces that I can't see that well. I would have to. It's got a square, here. and then it's got something that looks it's got a square like square. Like yeah, well, the square is kuchi mouth, and then the other piece I think is a, just a common component that doesn't necessarily have a standalone meaning. Uh -huh. So anyway, so koen wa hotel no ushiro desu ne. It's this. Ja, it's this. Yeah. Okay. It. I believe. <coughs> yeah. That's just. It's a common component. But. Um, yeah. I think it's more of a. 
if you go back to the Chinese, I think it was a pronunciation clue about the, the um, meaning of the words. Anyway, going on to Dylan San. So what I wanted to say was, Su Ba Wa Ni Des, just to say, it's on the right, and that would uh, work. Well, that would work if you're actually standing right there, there where those people are in the little picture. Sorry, so that, that is one possibility, yes. Oh, right, there's Su, but, Su Ba Wa Po Shi Kun Mo Tonari Des. Yes, so that's another to way to do it, yes. Okay, and then Tatiana's time. Not naka, the, there's a different word for between. Instead of naka, you need oh, um, aida. aida, yes, because naka means inside, as in it's inside the college or something, but it doesn't work with two occasions. But hotel to daigaku no aida des means it's between the hotel and the college, which is what you meant. So that is. I was going off of um, like middle lines. Yeah. Right. Okay. But yeah. So you, how would you see it in the, well, it so, in the middle of the picture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So so that was um, Yoin, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, between. Yeah. Yoin. Yoin. What? Okay. So um, it was hotel, right? Okay. I keep wanting to write the kanji. You guys aren't ready to read those yet. Okay, so daigaku. Okay, hotel to daigaku no aida desu. Okay, so again, this whole phrase is the phrase that's answering the question doko, right? So, hotel to daigaku, this and this, no aida. So, between this and this, right? You see how that structure works? Hotel to daigaku no aida des. Okay, so you list the two items that it's between, and then you say no aida for the between. The one I, wrote, I was at F to the left and the have the letter the toe now. Which uh -huh. is and that's what I was more confused about. Oh okay. Because I was like, how do I combine this and this? Okay, yeah, you use to when you you've got two to. nouns, you can put to in between them to say this noun and that noun. Note please that to only works with nouns. Okay, if you're saying somebody is beautiful and intelligent. That's a completely different structure in Japanese. Adjectives cannot take an, they cannot take to. Um, if you're saying, I'm going to go to the post office and then eat at the restaurant, two different verbs, that's a completely different structure also. You cannot use to to combine two verbs that you're, I'm going to eat and then go or whatever. <laughs> it's a different structure in Japanese. You can't oh, use the whole to connect anything. I was like, finally we learned nouns. and. Yeah. No, we didn't. No. We, we learned and for nouns. That's it. <laughs> uh, this one's beautiful. That's yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Cut, cut, um, no, I will name it beautiful. Adjectives and verbs both conjugate in Japanese. And the way to connect or combine two adjectives in the same sentence or two verbs in the same sentence involves conjugation. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're not teaching it yet because we haven't actually learned the conjugation form. We won't until le lesson six. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be able to combine and say the book is interesting and difficult or, or the orange. sushi is expensive and delicious <laughs> or I'm going to wake up 
and eat breakfast and then go to school. That kind of connecting with adjectives and verbs is something that comes in lesson six and beyond. So how many lessons are in this semester? This is our last one. We're getting very close to finals time. We're, we're going to just have time to finish this chapter before finals. Um, lesson five, six, seven, eight, and perhaps nine will be what's included in um, second semester. It depends on how comfortable people are at, go at going at a little bit faster pace than to fit in a fifth chapter, which I'm hoping we can do just because lessons eight and nine kind of go together because eight introduces casual speech for present tense verbs and nine introduces casual speech for past tense verbs. For, for all those chapters in this book? Or is it yeah, it's all in this book. There's 12 chapters. Yeah, there are 12 chapters in this book and it usually takes me into the third semester and then we may, depending on how many chapters we get to in the second semester, third semester we we may finish this book and go on a little bit to the next book, but we won't finish this book in two semesters going at the pace we're going now. So there was a time when I used to squeeze six chapters into a semester, but I lost even more people along the way because it was too intense. Yeah. 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 I think um, this book was built for the assumption of four to five classroom hours per week, not three. So if we were meeting five days a week for a 50 minute period each day, then yeah, we could probably cover six chapters in the semester. But trying to do that with the time we have allotted is unrealistic. So, okay, so Buoyin um, we did, right? So Jack gets to do the same thing, but instead of with buildings, it's going to be with things in the bedroom. Okay. Which, yeah. So go ahead. Right. NP2 up, square no way this. Does everybody see the NP2? Right. And of course, if you wanted to, you could also do something like Enpitsu wa tegami no tonari desu, or tegami no chikaku desu, right? Next to the letter or near the letter. Mm -hmm. Those are other possibilities for that. Ja, mm -hmm. <coughs> setsu san, um, uh, Okay. Sounds silly, but it's hi. Tonari no telebi telebi. It's the next two's TV. Oh. <laughs> Grammar structure. What goes first and now, right? What goes over here? The location word. Okay, it's 
So then one one um Terebi no Tonari des. Hi, that's much better. Terebi no Tonari des. Or depending on your perspective, Terebi no Maya des for for perhaps. Or Terebi no Kitaku des if you want to be a little bit vague so you're not called on whether it's really in front of or next to. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So, one of those. Or, if you wanted to get cagey about it, teburu no ue desu. It's on top of the table. <laughs> right? Which table? Yeah. You know, that's a desk. Right. Whatever. Yeah, there's many different ways you can. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can describe most of these. And actually, I'm going to encourage you guys to do that when you're practicing on your own or with partners either verbally or in written form or both, come up with as many different sentences as you can for each of these in both of these guys because it's good practice. Okay, da Andrea san? Kaban wa tsukure no kita desu. Hai. Da Jung san? Oshi wa doa no chikaku desu. Hai, that works. Okay. So everybody sees how that works, right? And then of course you could also do, you know, kasa wa doko desu ka? Neko wa doko desu ka? Isu wa doko desu ka? Hon wa doko desu ka? Tegami wa doko desu ka? Mado wa doko desu ka? Mado is the hat. Yeah, boshi is hat. But the, yeah, there are so many different things you could do but with this picture. And I do believe that that picture shows up in our OPI where you might be assigned something other than just the nouns that were listed just there. You might be asked to tell where's the door, or where's the, the, where's the window, Mado, or where's the chair or the cat. <laughs> okay. Uh, what did you say, the cat, what was the hat to the cat? Oh, no, I was saying that you could ask other questions, like where is the cat? No, the, the uh, hat wasn't in relation know, to the cat. The hat was, was in relation to something else. Okay, because like, I was confused. You could like say, uh, like he said, boshi wa doa no tonari desu, or doa no chikaku desu. You could also say, boshi wa doa tomaro no aida desu. Which means yeah. the door and the window, right? That works too. So let's look at C while we still have some time. Okay, so this is another one of those um, gap information gap exercises where if you're asking about one of these, the answer for the other person who is answering is going to be on page 126. page desu And then the people who are, when we get through those first five, then we'll have to switch and the person asking will be answering from the other direction. So let's have uh, Duren san ask the question and Tatiana san is going to answer for Ichiban. Oh, yeah, I'm asking for Matt A then. Yeah, you're asking for so where the Daigaku is. is and she's going to have to look at Matt B to figure that out. Hi. Oh, yes. now, now you're going to ask Jack about bus pay. Bus pay wa the taco no Hi. So it's Okay, now Jack's going to ask Sveta about Coco. Coen. 
Cohen. But look at your grammar structure. Oh. Oh. Cocoa. 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 Um. My. Nope. Nope. Oh. Koi. Cohen. Cohen. No. My. Yes. My. Yes. My. Yes. Hi. Cocoa. Cohen. No. My. Yes. By the way, the mae that we're using for in front of or across from is the same as the mae in na mae. Okay, so that if that helps you with your pronunciation, it's the same kanji. It's mae. Okay, so um, okay, honya. So that's what you're asking Sierra about honya. should tell you that some variation or version of this kind of exercise is definitely going to be on the OPF. You're going to definitely be asked to describe to a partner where something is and you're, you're going to have to ask where something is and have them describe where something is and vice versa. 
and be able to locate it. You, you may actually have like a little copy of this thing where you have to actually answer the question where something is and then your partner has to understand you and write down what you told them about the location and vice versa. So you have to describe it correctly and they have to understand you well enough to mark it down on the sheet. Let's use sign language. <laughs> <laughs> so like if, if you say restaurant wa doko desu ka and the other person says hotel no mae desu you have to be able to identify the hotel and mark that the thing in front of it is the restaurant. Okay. So, um, so be ready for something like that. Okay. And on Thursday, we didn't get as far as I was hoping to today, but on Thursday we will look at segment three using desktop talking about past tense, and we'll also hopefully get to section four using mashita, the past tense forms of other verbs besides des. Okay, so that is the plan for Thursday. And then next week, hopefully we'll get to five and six. Um, and then after Thanksgiving, we will spend extra time on kanji because there's actually a little bit longer paragraph to read in the kanji section this chapter. And we've got some what more complex kanji to deal with. And International Day is tomorrow. Oh, oh, right. Okay. And International Day is tomorrow if anybody wants to come to International Day see. events tomorrow. What is that? We're going to have a bunch of different regions of the world, and then you go to each one, you get your passport stamped, and then you can get free food and you get entered in a drawing. And the drawing is for a, I keep forgetting the word, <laughs> to go to a different co co country, you know, the oh. study abroad program. Wow. Study abroad pro so uh, there's scholarship. a scholarship. It's a scholarship? Uh, a drawing, a drawing. To win a, yeah. Wow. You know, That's a big any drive. Of the, I think it's any of our campuses. And there's one in Japan, and I don't remember where this other I'm ones going, are. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm planning to the one in Japan in December. Are you? You can plan to get a scholarship. If you're you going? Actually going? Enter the drawing. Nice. How long is it? It's, they have an 8 day and an 11 day. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where in Japan do you get to go? Um, for the words, each table. You go to the same places unless you're doing like the 11 days or longer. I know one place was good um, and then they enter you and go to Hiroshima. That's tomorrow. One of the other, I think it's on the bomb city. There's only the two Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Oh, no, no. It's a Nagoya, maybe, or Nara? There's the loft down in Kobe. But I know we're going to, we're going to like different places there, but um, yeah. the, if you go on the on the school website and go to Student Life and Study Abroad, 